What's going on YouTube? Welcome to the channel. Today we are working on my 2018 Polaris Sportsman 850. Great machine, love every bit of it. It looks good, it rides good, and it's pretty fast. Um, but one thing I don't like about it is where the rad is located on these machines. Um, I find that it gets way too easily and too quickly filled up with mud. Um, and believe me, I maintain my stuff and I wash the bike after every use. But doesn't matter the first two, three, four, five, ten mud holes you go into. Before you know it, your temps are rising and you're slowing down the group. So I don't want to do that anymore. We're going to relocate the rad. And I'm going to show you guys a step-by-step -step video on how to take apart your front end and relocate the rad. But this video is going to be a little different because most videos, I mean, actually, there's probably not even a video out there that I, that I saw. But most installation instructions require you to pretty well lose access um, to your storage box. I can't do that. I can't go without my storage box. I don't feel like having extra luggage on the back, so I need my storage box. And in order for me to do that, I'm going to modify the kit a little bit in order to remain uh, use out of my storage box and relocate the rad. So today, I'm gonna show you guys my twist on doing a rad relocate, keeping your storage box, and installing a wild boar kit. So stay tuned, and I can show you how it's done. Okay guys, so first step in, uh, in today's procedure is going to be remove the front bumper if you have one. Um, if the dealer didn't put it on for you, obviously you did it yourself, but to take it off, it's one, two, three, and four bolts slides right out. Um, so go ahead and do that. And then obviously remove your storage box to get access to the top of the rad here, which is quite easy to do. Obviously I'm sure you've done it before, crack them loose and she'll come out. So why don't we go ahead and do that first. Once you guys have the bumper removed and the storage box out of it, you're gonna take off this top thing just to get it out of your way. It makes your life a little bit easier. Four bolts, or rather two bolts, one, two, and two clips. These two clips right here. Take that off and that get out of your way. Once you guys got that out of the way, um, you have a lot more room to work. You'll have a grill here pops off by just pulling this clip down that you'll see. Pull that out, toss it aside. Um, I did that off camera, not a big deal. Next, you guys are gonna wanna remove this lower plastic piece here. Uh, if you have a winch, just get it off out of the way. For now, you can leave it in place for the time being. And it's just four bolts and two push clips. One, two, three, four, and two push clips here. Remove that and get that out of your way. All right, now that that's out of the way, you see you have a bit more access to everything else, but you're not done yet. You have to remove this upper piece just to get access to a couple bolts that are behind that are holding, um, I guess, the rad support. Uh, it seems to be four bolts. They have their 10 millimeter heads. One, two, three, and of course one on the other side. Uh, get that out of the way. Don't forget you have this electrical connector here. You can either take out the bulb or pop the connector off, whatever is easier for you. So why don't you go ahead and remove that. Okay, I actually lied to you guys. Um, after you get those four bolts out of the way, it's kind of hard because this upper plastic piece seems to be holding this plastic bezel. I recommend taking these two bolts out as well, just to give this a bit more flex up and you could slide that out. That should pop right out. Now she's out of the way. I just wanna show you guys something. Like I said, I do a really good job cleaning my machine. I stick it in some pretty deep muddy places and I think I do a thorough job. But look at the areas that you can't reach underneath all that plastic, that is solid mud caked into the rad. That's clean. That again, solid mud 
caked into the rad. So guys, all the more reason to be doing a rad relocate is so you can clean it and it stays out of the crap. So, you know, cooling is everything, especially on hot summer days. I mean, I live in Canada and we do get some 30 plus days and anything caked in mud is not gonna be too happy. Alrighty, so, by the way, actually I wanted to mention 30 degrees, I mean Celsius, <laughs> for all my friends south of the border, I don't mean Fahrenheit, I mean Celsius, so I didn't want there to be any confusion and get ripped on in the comments, so I just want to make that clear. Um, the next step, guys, is going to be a little bit messy. Um, you're going to need a drain bucket. We're now going to begin to drain the coolant. Uh, it doesn't seem to have a drain on the rad from what I can see anywhere. Uh, simply uh, remove the lower rad hose right here and put a drain underneath so you can catch your coolant. Um, I'm going to run a couple needle nose pliers or uh, needle nose vice grips rather on the hoses so I only lose what comes out of the rad. It'll help uh, for bleeding the system later. And obviously I won't have to make as big of a mess and lose as much coolant. Um, you know, after you guys drain that and have it all ready to go, there's four bolts that hold this frame on. Okay, I haven't found a way to sneak this out. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Uh, if there is, you know, let me know in the comments below. But from what I could see so far, there's no way of cheating and sliding this out. It's pretty well boxed in on both sides. But Good news is, it's not that big of a deal to remove this front, I guess, frame. Uh, from what I can see, is just one, two, and two on the other side, okay? Those are 13 millimeter heads on an eight millimeter bolt. Uh, everything so far has either been a 13, a T20, or a 25 Torx, and just a couple of 10 mils. Uh, again, we're talking not threads, we're talking head of the bolts. Um, before you go ahead and remove those four bolts though, I would recommend dealing with some of this electrical. May look a little scary, it's not that bad. I'm gonna take off these two bolts from my fuse box here. And I'm going to situate that aside over here. I'm not gonna remove that with it. But this module I am going to remove with the, the front frame here, which is just a matter of taking these connectors off. Looks like just two connectors. And it'll also give me a chance to dielectric grease them as I like to run dielectric grease on everything. So go ahead and do that and, uh, and return back. Right on guys, so she is out. That's what you get. You get the whole frame assembly with the rad. No big deal. Now all we got left. Actually, 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 hold on. Wait a minute. Forgot to tell you. There's a connector here. For your fan. It's located on the right side. Right there. And pops off. Now, uh, those four bolts. Took it off. Comes with the reservoir and everything complete. Or the overflow, I should say. And, um... And then to actually remove the rod from the frame, it's two 10 mil bolts right here. And at the bottom, it's just two little rubber dowels that it pops out of. Now I put it in the box because obviously it's still got some residual stuff in it. I told you guys I left this computer on there. So I'm gonna dielectric grease both of them. I'm gonna dielectric grease every single connector I can find on this machine and uh, keep the water out of it, you know? Uh, if you guys do like to go in some water and the mud, which obviously if you guys are watching this, I'm pretty sure you do, then it's a good idea to keep your electronics as uh, water-free as possible, so to speak. So anyway, without too much jaw ratcheting, um, if you guys just watched the video to watch how you took apart your front end, that's how it's done. If you watch this video just to learn how to remove your rad, that's how that's done. If you guys watch the video to see how to relocate the rad, 
Well, that's coming up now. So the next step is get all the pieces for the wild boar kit, which I just pulled out of the box because I needed the box over here. And anyway, I'm gonna be assembling that kit. Put that on the bench and assemble it. And get ready to start drilling some holes. Um, don't forget, obviously, pull the rat out of the frame. You could start buttoning up the, uh, the frame back on if you'd like with the four bolts. And uh, again, guys, I can't stress enough, don't forget the dielectric grease. All right, stay tuned. All right, here we are again. Freshly cleaned rad. Don't forget, power wash it when you get the chance. Get within all those fins. She's gonna be able to breathe. In the meantime, I put this on. I haven't bolted it up yet, I just mocked it up. Dielectric grease on everything. We're moving to the bench. Let me get this out of the way. It doesn't need to be there. So, took everything out of the bag, slash box, whatever. Um, and I'm following the instructions, which don't give you many pictures, so it took me a second, but not a huge deal. Either way, I'm going to map it out for you here real quick. You have your, come on. You have your mainframe, okay? And you're gonna stick your screen, I'm gonna call this a screen, because it looks like a screen, and then you saddle the sides, tabs facing outwards, okay? Those are gonna fall into place right there. And these little 90s, or past 90s, they're gonna go right there, okay? These bolts here. To me, it looks like the rod's gonna sit on the bottom, and it looks like it's gonna be bolted into one of these. These here are the plates that'll be underneath to sandwich um, these guys here. And obviously a bag full of hardware and elbows and so on and so forth. Um, this looks like it's gonna, I'm assuming, I'm only gonna guess, it saddles this like so. And judging by the looks of the rat, it's for the rat cap. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this because that's what it tells me to do, but you got to put the small bolts in. I believe it's the quarter inch bolts. And uh, button them all up. Just don't put anything in these holes here. From the diagrams that I understand, those are uh, where, where we bolt on for the factory. Bolt holes of the rat. There it is, all buttoned up. Everything's nice and tight. Right, I still have these plates I gotta use for a sandwich. They gave us uh, elbows, obviously all the hardware, hose clamps, pretty much everything you need. I haven't found anything that they've forgotten, which is good. And this cap here is like I suspected for protecting your rad cap. Looks like a quality product. The only thing I don't like about it so far is that it's Pretty heavy. You know, I get it, they have to make it durable, but perhaps a little less material would have been nice. Cause, I mean, yes, it is an 850 and it does make power, but you know, I like to keep things light when I'm building things personally, but it's gonna serve a purpose and it's gonna do its job. So the next step is gonna be assembling this machine uh, to a point and then we have to drill the cap of our storage cover and then run some plumbing. So I'm gonna cut the clip here and when I press play, you guys will probably see a machine that's together. Bam, all back together. I just mocked it up. The front end is, is, is tight, it's fastened, but I just mocked this up here because I'm going to show you guys 
um, where you're going to scribe the marks on your cover to drill it. Where it's sitting right now is where it's going to be full time. Um, that's where I like it, that's where it says in the instructions. And I'm going to take a marker. If I can find one here real quick. Oh, oh my messy drawers. I'm just going to scribe. These locations because it's already centered. I should probably turn that light on for you guys. And um, and the results are like this. Okay. Just on the top of the flat, one right around there, there, and one right around there again. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and drill those holes. Well, you guys, I, I drilled those holes yesterday and I bolted it up. I was too, too tired. It was late and I had work in the morning, so I, uh, I, I called it quits for the night. But today, uh, we're picking it back up. You guys might notice something a little different about the bike. I put some new tires on it, brought them to work with me, mounted them up. They are 28 by 9 by 14 in the front and 28 by, I believe, 11 in the rear. I think they look pretty good. They're really aggressive. They're going to suit my needs in the mud. And actually, I will do a little review video maybe on that later but for now we're going to keep going on this on this um, rad relocate so what i did is i drilled those bolts like i uh, drilled those holes like i said rather and i tightened the bolts down and i used the plates inside like i should and now she's she's fixed on there firm solid guys this is a very strong kit um, I really think this machine is going to be sweet. It's going to be sweet, especially when I put that bumper on. That bumper just makes it, at least for me anyways. But what's next on the list, guys, is we are going to be putting on the hoses. Now, this is the different part from the instructions. I'm going to be doing it a certain way so that, um, again, we can use the storage. That's what this video is all about. So, um, in the next clip... I'm going to show you guys uh, where to root the hose is. We're going to be using the straight, um, the one inch straight connectors, not the 90s. I think the straights will work better. And uh, we're going to join to the stock rad hoses, of course, and bring them up to the uh, rad where it's sitting now. So I'll show you guys in one second. Okay, you guys. So it's all mounted and rooted. There is the finished product. I feel like rooting it this way is better than the way they describe in the instructions. This reason is because, look, I still make use of my storage box. Hoses run through it, to the wards of front here, do a little bit of trimming on your, your front grill. All right, just make sure it doesn't touch so it doesn't rub through. This minor rubbing, very minor kinking right here. When there's coolant pressure, that'll go away. I'm gonna monitor everything to make sure that there's no pierced uh, or, or chafing hoses, but I think for the most part, it'll be okay. Uh, guys, I love the way the, way the machine looks. Like it's, it's, it's pretty nice in my opinion. I even like the way these hoses are rooted. It reminds me of uh, the racing days when I would run my oil cooler, let's say, outside the front bumper if there wasn't any space because of the inner cooler. But I do like it. I do like the blue hose. Uh, it wasn't by choice. It's just what I had. And it seems to add a nice little touch to the machine. So I hope you guys like this video. 
All I have left to do here is fill it with coolant. And I can't stress enough to you guys that you guys got to make sure all the uh, the air is out of the system or else, you know, air pockets will make you overheat. Um, with regards to the wiring of the fan, don't forget, extend the wires. How I'm going to do it is I'm going to cut these wires probably about here somewhere. Not my harness side of the machine, but the fan side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend them and probably tuck them behind the black hose and zip tie it. And of course, onto my connector against the frame there. Now you guys are going to notice what I had to do under here was I had to reroute them from going, reroute this rat hose. Turn this light on here. I had to reroute this rat hose from the outside of the frame to the inside. And same with the other side here. I had to go from the outside of the frame through to the inside. And there you can see they come through the, the front grill. Um, I just had enough hose. Up here I decided it was better to run a, a 90 so it didn't put a kink on the hose. And down here it was not a problem at all because it's on an angle and you could just go straight on the rad direct. So guys, this is the finished product. I can't wait to use it. It's Friday. We're gonna go riding on Sunday with the boys and I'm telling you, I'm gonna hit every single mud hole. Most importantly guys, thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned something today. Um, if you liked what I did, let me know. If you don't like it and, and you think I could have done something better, let me know as well. Um, I'm gonna keep you guys up to date on the, um, you know, on the, the longevity of doing it this way. I think it will be just fine. Um, and of course, don't forget, please like and subscribe. That keeps me going. You know, the positive feedback or negative, anything, let me know. Let me know how I can make my videos better. Again, I'm not perfect. I'm just a guy who has, who has fun in his garage. So uh, let me know guys, have a great day and I hope you guys learned something and you can uh, build it yourself. All right, take care.